Hello everyone and welcome to Sally and Bytes. Let's work out these NCERT problems, functions in Python, part 2. Suggested lab exercises for class 11 students of computer science. With easy step-by-step -step explanation and practical implementation. Let's dive in and get started. Question 1. Write a Python program to check the divisibility of a number by 7 that is passed as a parameter to the user-defined function. Let's look at the Python code. Line 1. Function definition. We start by defining a user-defined function called is underscore divisible underscore by underscore 7. This function takes one parameter called number, which is the number we want to check for divisibility by 7. In line 2 to 5, we check for divisibility. Inside the function, we use the modulo operator to check if the remainder when number is divided by 7 is equal to 0. If the remainder is 0, it means the number is divisible by 7, so we return true. Otherwise, we return false. In line 8, user input. We then prompt the user to enter a number and store the input in the variable user underscore input. We convert the input to an integer using int function because user input is initially treated as a string. In line 11, function call, next, we call the is underscore divisible underscore by underscore 7 function with the user underscore input as the argument. This will check if the user's input number is divisible by 7. In line 12 to 14, print result. Depending on the return value of the is underscore divisible underscore by underscore 7 function, either true or false, we print a message to inform the user whether the number is divisible by 7 or not. If the return value is true, it means the number is divisible by 7, so we print that the number is divisible. If the return value is false, it means the number is not divisible by 7, so we print that the number is not divisible. End of program. The program execution ends after printing the result. Let's recall, this program defines a function to check divisibility by 7, takes user input, checks if the input number is divisible by 7, and prints the result. You can check the output 49, given by the user. So 49 is divisible by 7. And again when we run the code, the user enters a number 40 and it results as 40 is not divisible by 7. Having doubt with the number parameter and user underscore input. Now listen carefully, user underscore input is the user's input value, and number is the parameter of the is underscore divisible underscore by underscore 7 function that represents the number to be checked for divisibility. The user underscore input value is passed to the function as the number parameter when the function is called. Again let's repeat. The user underscore input value is passed to the function as the number parameter when the function is called. Have you noticed, here, in print statement, we have used f string and f string, or formatted string literal, in Python allows you to embed expressions and variables within a string for easy string interpolation and formatting in a single line of code. Question 2. Write a Python program that uses a user-defined function that accepts name and gender, as m for male, f for female, and prefixes Mr. or Miss on the basis of the gender. Now, look at the Python code. In line 3, function definition. We start by defining a user-defined function called add underscore prefix. This function takes two parameters, name and gender. In line 4 to 9, gender prefixing. Inside the function, we use an if statement to check the value of the gender parameter. If gender is equal to m, it means the user specified male gender. In this case, we use an f string to return Mr. followed by the name parameter. If gender is equal to f, it means the user specified female gender. In this case, we use an f string to return Mississippi followed by the name parameter. If the gender does not match M or F, we return a message indicating an unknown gender, including the name parameter in the message. In line 12 and 13, user input. We prompt the user to enter a name and a gender either M for male or F for female, 
using the input, function, and store the inputs in the name and gender variables. In line 16, function call. We call the add underscore prefix function with the name and gender variables as arguments. This is where the function's logic is executed, and it returns the prefix name or an unknown gender message. In line 19, we are printing the result. Finally, we print the result, which is stored in the result variable. This will display the name with the appropriate prefix based on the gender entered by the user. So, when you run the program, it asks the user for a name and gender, uses the add underscore prefix function to determine the appropriate prefix, and then displays the formatted name with the prefix. Let's see the output. The user enters a name Emily. Gender is F for female, the output displayed is Mississippi Emily. The user enters a name Alex. Gender is M for male, the output displayed is Mr. Alex. The user enters a name Kevin. Gender is T, the output displayed is unknown gender, Kevin. Question 3. Write a Python program that has a user-defined function to accept the coefficients of a quadratic equation in variables and calculates its determinant. For example, if the coefficients are stored in the variables a, b, c then calculate determinant as b square minus 4ac, write the appropriate condition to check determinants on positive, zero and negative and output appropriate result. Now, look at the Python code. In line 1, Function definition, we start by defining a user-defined function called calculate underscore quadratic underscore determinant. This function takes three parameters, a, b, and c, in line 2, determinant calculation. Inside the function, we calculate the determinant of the quadratic equation using the formula b raised to the power 2 minus 4ac and store the result in the determinant variable. In line 4 to 9, determinant check. We use if statements to check the value of the determinant variable. If the determinant is greater than zero, it means the quadratic equation has two distinct real roots. In this case, we return a message indicating that the determinant is positive. If the determinant is equal to zero, it means the quadratic equation has one real root, a repeated root. We return a message indicating that the determinant is zero. If the determinant is less than zero, it means the quadratic equation has no real roots, complex roots. We return a message indicating that the determinant is negative. In line 12, 13, and 14, user input. We use the input function to get user input for the coefficients a, b, and c. The float function is used to convert the user's input into floating point numbers because coefficients can be decimal values. In line 17, function call. We call the calculate underscore quadratic underscore determinant function with the user provided coefficients a, b, and c as arguments. This is where the function's logic is executed, and it calculates the determinant and checks its sign. In line 20, we are printing the result. Finally, we print the result, which is stored in the result variable. The result will indicate whether the determinant is positive, zero, or negative based on the coefficients entered by the user. So, when you run the program, it prompts the user to enter the coefficients of a quadratic equation, calculates the determinant, checks its sign, and prints an appropriate message indicating whether the determinant is positive, zero, or negative. You can look at the output. The user enters coefficient a as 2, coefficient b as 6, and coefficient c as 3. Determinant is positive. The quadratic equation has two distinct real roots. 12.0 is displayed. The user enters coefficient a as minus 4, coefficient b as minus 2, and coefficient c as minus 6. Determinant is negative. The quadratic equation has no real roots. Complex roots, minus 92.0 is displayed. The user enters coefficient a as 2, coefficient b as 4, and coefficient c as 2. Determinant is 0, 
the quadratic equation has one real root, a repeated root, 0.0, .0 is displayed. Question 4. ABC School has allotted unique token IDs from 1 to 600 to all the parents for facilitating a lucky draw on the day of their annual day function. The winner would receive a special prize. Write a program using Python that helps to automate the task. Hint, use random module. Now, look at the Python code. In line 1, importing the random module, we start by importing the random module which provides functions for generating random numbers. This module is used to facilitate the random selection of a winner from the available token IDs. In line 4, generating a random winner. We use the random.randit function to generate a random integer within a specified range. In this case, we want to select a winner from token IDs ranging from 1 to 600. So, we use random.randint of 1, 600. Random.randint of 1, 600 generates a random integer between 1, inclusive, and 600, inclusive, and assigns it to the winner variable. This integer represents the token ID of the lucky winner. In line 7, we are printing the winner. We print a message to announce the winner including their randomly selected token ID, using an f-string. The print statement displays the message, where, winner, is replaced by the actual token ID of the winner generated in the previous step. Program Execution When you run this program, it performs the following actions. Imports the random module. Selects a random token ID as the winner. Announces the winner by printing a message with the selected token ID. The output will be something like what is shown here. The winner of the lucky draw is token ID 136. Congratulations! This program automates the task of selecting a random winner from the given range of token IDs using Python's random module. Question 5. Write a Python program that implements a user-defined function that accepts principal amount, rate, time, number of times the interest is compounded to calculate and displays compound interest. Now, look at the Python code. In line 1, function definition. We define a function called calculate underscore compound underscore interest that accepts four parameters, principal, rate, time, and n. These parameters represent the principal amount, annual interest rate, time period in years, and the number of times interest is compounded per year, respectively. In line 3, convert rate to decimal. Inside the function, we convert the rate from a percentage to a decimal by dividing it by 100. For example, if the user enters a rate of 5%, it becomes 0.05 in decimal form. In line 6 and 7, calculate compound interest. We use the compound interest formula within the function. First, we calculate the future amount, amount, using the formula, and then we calculate the compound interest by subtracting the principal amount from the future amount. In line 9, we are returning the compound interest. In line 12, 13, 14, and 15 user input, Outside the function, the program prompts the user to input the principal amount, annual interest rate, time period in years, and the number of times interest is compounded per year. The input function is used to gather user input, and float and int are used to convert the input to appropriate data types. In line 18, calculate compound interest using the function. We call the calculate underscore compound underscore interest function with the user provided values for principal, rate, time, and n to calculate the compound interest. The result is stored in the variable interest. In line 21, display result. Finally, we display the calculated compound interest using print function. The colon 2f in the f string format specifies that the result should be displayed with two decimal places. When you run this program, it will take the user's input, calculate the compound interest using the provided formula within the function, and display the result. You can check the output on the console. 
Question 6. Write a Python program that has a user-defined function to accept two numbers as parameters, if number 1 is less than number 2 then numbers are swapped and returned, that is, number 2 is returned in place of number 1 and number 1 is reformed in place of number 2, otherwise the same order is returned. So, what is meant by swapping? Swapping is a common programming operation that involves exchanging the values of two variables. In other words, if you have two variables, a and b, swapping their values means that the value of a is assigned to b, and the value of b is assigned to a. This process effectively swaps the values of the two variables. Now, look at the Python code. In line 1, function definition. Here, a function named swap underscore numbers underscore if underscore less is defined, which takes two parameters, num1 and num2. This function will swap the values of these two numbers if num1 is less than num2. In line 2, condition for swapping. Inside the function, there is an if statement that checks if num1 is less than num2. If this condition is true, it means that num1 is indeed less than num2, and swapping is needed. In line 3, swap the numbers. This line swaps the values of num1 and num2 using tuple unpacking. It assigns the value of num2 to num1 and the value of num1 to num2. As a result, the values of num1 and num2 are effectively swapped. In line 4, return the swapped values. After swapping, the function returns the swapped values as a tuple, where num1 is the first element and num2 is the second element. In line 7 and 8, user input. Outside the function, the program prompts the user to input two numbers. These input values are stored in the variables num1 and num2. The float function is used to convert the input values to floating point numbers. In line 11, call the function to swap. The program calls the swap underscore numbers underscore if underscore less function, passing the user provided values of num1 and num2. If num is less than num2, the function will swap them. In line 14, 15, and 16, display the result. Finally, the program prints the result. If the numbers were swapped, if num1 was less than num2, it displays the swapped values. Otherwise, it displays the original values as entered by the user. Now, look at the first output. When the first number is less than the second number, the program will swap them and display the swapped numbers. In this first output, the numbers 24 and 84 were swapped because 24 is less than 84. Now, look at the second output. When the first number is greater than or equal to the second number, the program will not perform any swapping and will display the numbers as entered. In this second output, the numbers 150 were not swapped because 100 is greater than 50. The output will reflect whether or not the numbers were swapped based on the condition defined in the swap underscore numbers underscore if underscore less function. Question 7. Write a Python program that contains user-defined functions to calculate area, perimeter or surface area whichever is applicable for various shapes like square, rectangle, triangle, circle and cylinder. The user-defined functions should accept the values for calculation as parameters and the calculated value should be returned. Import the module and use the appropriate functions. Now, let's see the Python code. In line 1, import the math module. The program starts by importing the math module, which is used for mathematical calculations like pi, math.pi, and exponentiation, double star. From line 4 to 34. Define functions for calculations. A series of user-defined functions are defined, each corresponding to a specific shape's calculations. Let's discuss each function. In line 4 and 5, calculate underscore square underscore area of side underscore length. This function calculates the area of a square based on the length of one side, side underscore length. The formula for the area of a square is side underscore length raised to the power 2, where double star represents exponentiation. 
in line 8 and 9, calculate underscore square underscore perimeter of side underscore length. This function calculates the perimeter, or circumference, of a square based on the length of one side, side underscore length. The formula for the perimeter of a square is 4 asterisk side underscore length, as a square has 4 equal sides. In line 12 and 13, calculate underscore rectangle underscore area of length comma width. This function calculates the area of a rectangle based on its length, length, and width, width. The formula for the area of a rectangle is length asterisk width. In line 16 and 17, calculate underscore rectangle underscore perimeter of length, width. This function calculates the perimeter of a rectangle based on its length, length, and width, width. The formula for the perimeter of a rectangle is 2 asterisk, length plus width, as it sums the lengths of all four sides. In line 20 and 21, calculate underscore triangle underscore area of base height. This function calculates the area of a triangle based on its base, base, and height, height. The formula for the area of a triangle is 0.5 asterisk base asterisk height where 0.5 represents one half. In line 24 and 25, calculate underscore circle underscore circumference of radius. This function calculates the circumference of a circle based on its radius, radius. The formula for the circumference of a circle is 2 asterisk math dot pi asterisk radius, where math dot pi is the mathematical constant pi. In line 28 and 29, Calculate underscore circle underscore area of radius. This function calculates the area of a circle based on its radius, radius. The formula for the area of a circle is math dot pi asterisk radius 2, where represents exponentiation and math dot pi is pi. In line 32 and 34, calculate underscore cylinder underscore surface underscore area of radius comma height. This function calculates the surface area of a cylinder based on its radius, radius, and height, height. The formula for the surface area of a cylinder is 2 asterisk math dot pi asterisk radius raised to the power 2 plus 2 asterisk math dot pi asterisk radius asterisk height. This accounts for both the lateral surface area and the two circular bases. These functions are defined to perform specific calculations for various geometric shapes, and they are later used in the program to compute the desired values based on user input. User input for shape choice. The program presents a menu to the user, allowing them to select a shape by entering a corresponding number, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. The user's choice is stored in the variable choice. From line 45 to 75, conditional statements for shape selection. Based on the user's choice, the program uses conditional statements, if elif else, to execute the appropriate block of code for the selected shape. In line 45, square, choice 1. If the user selects one, they are indicating that they want to perform calculations related to a square. The program will then prompt the user to input the necessary parameters for square calculations, such as the side length. The user can choose to calculate the area, perimeter, or any other relevant property of a square. In line 51, rectangle, choice 2. If the user selects 2, they are indicating that they want to perform calculations related to a rectangle. The program will then prompt the user to input the necessary parameters for rectangle calculations, such as the length and width. The user can choose to calculate the area, perimeter, or any other relevant property of a rectangle. In line 58, triangle, choice 3. If the user selects 3, they are indicating that they want to perform calculations related to a triangle. The program will then prompt the user to input the necessary parameters for triangle calculations, such as the base and height. The user can choose to calculate the area or any other relevant property of a triangle. In line 63, circle, choice 4. 
If the user selects 4, they are indicating that they want to perform calculations related to a circle. The program will then prompt the user to input the necessary parameters for circle calculations, such as the radius. The user can choose to calculate the area, circumference, or any other relevant property of a circle. In line 69. Cylinder, choice 5. If the user selects 5, they are indicating that they want to perform calculations related to a cylinder. The program will then prompt the user to input the necessary parameters for cylinder calculations, such as the radius of the base and the height. The user can choose to calculate the surface area or any other relevant property of a cylinder. These choices allow the user to specify the geometric shape for which they want to perform calculations, and the program guides them through the input process to calculate the desired properties based on their choice. In line 74 and 75. Handling invalid choices. If the user enters an invalid choice, not 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, the program displays invalid choice. Execution. The program runs from top to bottom, and the specific block of code based on the user's choice is executed. Let's check the output. The user enters the choice as 2. That is rectangle. The length of the rectangle is entered as 5. The width as 3 and the area of the rectangle displayed is 15.0 and the perimeter of the rectangle is displayed as 16.0. Question 8. Write a Python program that creates a GK quiz consisting of any five questions of your choice. The questions should be displayed randomly. Create a user-defined function score to calculate the score of the quiz and another user-defined function remark score value that accepts the final score to display remarks as follows. You can see the tabular column regarding the marks and remarks. Now, look at the Python code. The Python program that creates a GK, general knowledge, quiz with five random questions, calculates the user's score, and provides remarks based on the score. First, we are importing random module. From line 4 to line 30, define quiz questions. A list called quiz underscore questions is defined, which contains five dictionaries. Each dictionary represents a quiz question and includes the question itself, multiple choice options, and the correct answer. From line 33 to 39, ask underscore question function. This function is defined to ask a random question from the quiz underscore questions list to the user. It randomly selects a question using random dot choice and displays the question and its options. The user is prompted to enter their answer, 1, 2, 3, or 4, corresponding to the multiple choice options. The function returns true if the user's answer matches the correct answer and false otherwise. From line 42 to 47, score function. This function calculates the user's score by calling ask underscore question, five times, for five questions, and keeping track of the number of correct answers. It returns the user's score as an integer. From line 50 to 58. Remark of score underscore value function. This function accepts the user's score as an argument, score underscore value, and provides remarks based on the score. It uses a dictionary, remarks, to map scores to remarks. In line 59, we return the remarks. From line 60 to 66. Main program. The program begins with a welcome message. The user is instructed to answer the questions with the corresponding number, 1, 2, 3, or 4. In line 64. Quiz execution. The score function is called to execute the quiz and calculate the user's score. It asks five random questions and keeps track of correct answers. The user's score is stored in the user underscore score variable. In line 65. Display results. The program displays the user's score using print, f your score, user underscore score. 
it calls the remark function to determine the appropriate remark based on the user's score and displays it using print f remarks remark of user underscore score in line 66 remark display the remark corresponding to the user's score is displayed as feedback on their performance in the quiz the program runs from start to finish guiding the user through a random selection of five quiz questions evaluating their answers and providing a score and remark based on their performance you can check the output here the user attends the quiz here by answering the following questions with the corresponding number. After completing the five questions, the score and remarks will be displayed in the output. Here, score is five and hence remarks is outstanding. According to the score, the remarks change. Thanks for watching. Watch the upcoming videos. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay updated with engaging content and never miss out on my latest videos.